As an artist working in public space, you have a very different set of goals than when you're working in a gallery. When I work in a museum or a gallery, I can make a lot of assumptions about who's going to walk through that door. One of the exciting things about working in public space is you can't make those assumptions. Art comes with the concept and the envisions for a certain location, and on one manner can I interpret it and translate it into a in an actual object, and also all the technical problems there for solving. I want a piece that, that resonates with its surroundings um, and at the same time is able to comment on the surroundings without ruining them, right? I don't, the last thing I want to do is interfere with someone's aesthetic experience in, in a landscape like this, but I do want to add to it. I want to give them some more tools to think about and understand this landscape. What's interesting to me is you know, looking at this as a landscape in time, right? Which, which is very much the focus of the project that we're doing. You know, we're creating a kind of tree of life, but it's not just the things that you might see in the environment, but it's, it's life over you know, millions of years. So to be about things that are here now, things that are having success or also are in crisis, but also imagining the deeper history when, when mastodons roamed the valley, you know, when, when Ammonites swam in the valley. So this is a, a tree of life that's not a, a conventional tree of life. As much as I'm interested in biology, I'm not a biologist, I'm an artist, so I want this to be evocative and I want to, to resonate in a way that um, people can project upon it. I think you have to give the viewer some work to do. This is certainly not the first tree I've done, right? The tree is an important motif for me. And I think about the tree as, you know, this significant thing that connects the earth, the land, and the underground, right? It has this, this vitality. It's always been this symbol of life and something that in some way protects us. And hopefully we protect the tree. It, it really represents sort of perfect biological engineering. So trying to replicate that is not so easy. Luckily, we have a very um, expert team. What you see on the first face, there's a whole technical background achter. And it's all very duurzaam gemaakt. There's blood in this bone. Van mij. Toen er uiteindelijk dit idee was geaccepteerd, uh, dat was gebaseerd op een tekening die Mark gemaakt heeft, zijn wij begonnen met hoe kun je een tweedimensionale tekening uh, vertalen in een driedimensionaal object dat uh, ook al de objecten die erin zitten weer mooi tot recht laten komen. Dus we hebben een computermodel gemaakt. Uh, het was ook besloten dat de fabricatie van de boom hier lokaal zou plaatsvinden. Dat maakt, we gaan, het zou natuurlijk nonsens zijn om een boom te verschepen vanuit Amerika, terwijl jullie natuurlijk boom hebben. Uh, dus, uh, maar om dat, te, om dat te faciliteren moesten we hele nauwkeurige tekeningen maken in de computer. Dus daarna is de, de beer en de vos die zijn uh, met, met, met hout dat gaan bekleden. had a lot of discussion about how naturalistic it should be, you know, whether it should feel like a sculpture or feel like a real tree or feel like a Frankenstein tree. So it, so it really broadcasts its artificial quality. And those are, those are really interesting discussions in terms of the direction of the tree. So we have a steel core, 
We're surrounding it by a natural wood and we're very much sculpting it so it fits into the environment. We'll be coloring it so it's harmonious with what's going on there. Um, it is a, um, a complex piece of engineering. The, the object itself, that's not the, for me, a really uh, straightforward uh, process. I take the seagull, I know how it's done, how it's done, how it's done, and I have a team of ja, 13 is an ongelukste al, maar meer dan 13 kunstenaars en, en craftsmen who, die dan met mij samen die objecten heeft gemaakt. En dat, 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 dat ranged van smeden, blacksmithing of de schaar, die is helemaal uit staal gemaakt, die is zo groot. De, de, de dieren zoals de paddenstoel die je ziet, daar zit een roes van stalen frame helemaal in, zodat so het heel duurzaam is. One of the inspirations for this is what happens after a flood, and you see that here very much. When there's the flood and the flood recedes, and you find a tree, and there are all these strange objects inside, right? There's, there are grasses, and there's plastic garbage, and there's other kinds of things caught in these trees. So this feels a little bit like this. You know, there's the flood of time, and the water is receded, and all of these organisms are in the tree. This piece is sited on a high point, and this high point is a refuge. So when the water rises, many animals come to this point because this is the point that is above the water line. You know, for me, what I think this piece adds and what it talks about is understanding this landscape in terms of continuity of time, right? That time is flowing through this landscape and uh, that we are not in any way the culmination of that time, but that we are just a moment in that time. You know, we are just um, one blip in time and it's flowing through us like the river is flowing through the valley. Mm -hmm.